him up, lay it down just like Matt Amari. Wrestling little half ups, gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every weekend, it's feeling like a party. Mula Rick Flair, huh? Showing out like Bianca Belair, huh? Best podcast, flush it in the air, huh? From the rings and we win it, don't care, huh? No cap. Throw him up, lay it down just like Matt Amari. Wrestling little half ups, gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every weekend, it's feeling like a party. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Or should I say welcome to a very oh. special Wrestling Rehab Up podcast. I'm your host, Mari Forth. And with me, as mm-hmm, always, mm-hmm, my mm-hmm, co-host, mm-hmm. Mr. Matt Scott. Matt, how are you? I am lovely. And I'm ready for a special edition. I feel like I'm feeling all sorts of tingles, Mari. I just don't know what to do with myself. I'm excited. Yes, and we have an amazing returning returning guest. Uh, mm-hmm. He's been with us several times, and I, I'm glad yes. that I get to podcast with him again. It's Me too, and guest. I will also say that he is, of course, known uh, for his Survivor <laughs> Philadelphia fame, Survivor Philadelphia Season 2, Head versus Heart, uh, with the own, one and only Matt Scott. He's not Mari. He's not sorry. He's Ari Ferrari. Oh, okay. Yeah, baby. Right. That's what we're doing. All right. Okay. I thought I was doing the intro, but it's okay. Hi, Ari. <laughs> you got the Mari Ari party, the Ari Ferrari. It's Saturday night. You know what that yes. means. Let's I'm party, Marty. Yes. Uh, sure. <laughs> Ari, we're so glad to have you. Anything new with you since the last time you're on? Yeah. Oh, so much has been new. Uh, no longer on Twitter. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, it's an been, X, been hard to mean? reach him. Yeah. It's hard to get a hold of the kid. You, you need yeah. to find me IRL. Yeah. Uh, only can... live events moving forward. What's your address? <laughs> My address? No. It is uh, I-5. <laughs> No, no, please don't. Uh, I've, both I've keep moving. Smackdown Road. Don't dox, your, oh, don't dox yourself. <laughs> don't go to Smackdown Road. Um, but do go in on listening to this podcast because, Mari, what are we freaking doing? Yeah, so this week we're doing something a little different. Uh, you know, we, we bring you wrestling highlights every week. This week I was very uninspired. I was like shoveling through the stuff and I'm like, I could not bring myself to talk about the same things we've been talking about in the past three weeks. So mm. we have decided to do something very special today. We will be tier listing some mm. of the WWE 2023 uh, current main roster superstars. So um, it's going to be very fun. It's going to be an open conversation about some of the um, f- some of our favorite superstars, and we're going to put them into this amazing tier list that we we have set up here. So, if you're not watching our beautiful faces here on the YouTube, the Rob has a podcast YouTube channel, and you're just listening along, uh, let me break down the tier list for you. So, <laughs> the tier list at the top. Uh, is future Hall of Famers. So in this tier list, we're looking at people who we think as of right now, what they're doing right now, the work that's going on right now is a guaranteed spot, guarantees them a spot in the Hall of Fame. Like that's what we're looking at. No notes needed, perfection. Mm -hmm. Uh, The second tier after that is rising star. So for rising star, it's like they are on the path they are like they are on their way to that future Hall of Famer. It just maybe like they need a few more years. They're just on the right track, but you know, minor notes, but not many notes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Next up is repackage. So this is for people who we think just completely need a a new character altogether. Um, it's just not working for us. And um, maybe we'll even do some suggestions on what we think needs, like maybe a punching up for the character. And then finally, the final tier is X-Pac Heat. These are for the people who, if you listen to us, you know, you might think you know who's going in this tier. But it's it's for the tier of people who were like, it's just, they're not for us. That's I'm mildly annoyed when they're on my screen. Like, you know, it's, again, we're not trying to be negative or anything like that. But these are our opinions. And feel free to talk to us about them. But, you know. 
keep in mind don't be these mad are our opinions. these are our yes. opinions <laughs> yeah so before right Ari, these in- are our opinions <laughs> before our we opinions. get into the tier list uh uh any additional criteria you want to talk about here matt and in- including in any of these um no you know what like tweet us let us know your thoughts who would you put in the different tiers the future hall of fame rising star repackage x pac heat very curious because uh, um people will disagree with some what we have in mind and we'll actually definitely disagree with each other because we have no clue what is gonna happen next i'm kind of nervous actually Ari, how about you? Any well, anything can happen. That's the whole point of, of what we're doing here. I don't even know what I'm where I'm going to be ranking some of these folks. Like uh, uh, exactly, future Hall of Famers for people that are so hot right now that you can look into ten years into the future and try to put them in the future mm-hmm. Hall. I guess that's what we're gonna chat about and argue about over here. That's what we'll grapple with. Uh, we'll grapple. Ooh, next, I love that. For the, for the next podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look at you. All right, so let's let's stop <laughs> wasting time. Let's Uh-oh. get into it, and we're gonna start with Matt. Matt, uh, who is the sorry. first? You, yes, Matt. How dare I'm you? you I'll do spot. it. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> How dare you? Okay, I think I could do this. It's kind of overwhelming. We have a lot of people to choose from, but you know what? Let me go. I feel I'm I'm feeling the vibes. I'm feeling the heat, and I'm gonna go with the future Hall of Famer here. And there's only one person in my mind on this list who should be the first future Hall of Famer chosen. I'm going to go with the one, the only, the dirty Dominic Mysterio. Put him up there. Put Dom I up knew there. it. Why did I, why Dom. did I, I, I knew as soon as it was coming out of his mouth. So you are literally about to debate if we should put Dominic Mysterio on future Hall of Fame. Do you disagree, no. Mari? Yeah, why? What's wrong with you? I only disagree because I think it's a little bit too far in the future. So I would put him at Rising Star. I think he's amazing. I love everything he's doing right now. No, But I think it's a little premature. Mari, you move that cursor away from Dominic Mysterio because he's staying in the future Hall of Fame. (laughs) Because let me tell you, look at him right now where he is, the level of heat Mm -hmm. he has, but also the people he's surrounded by. That man Mm -hmm. is set up for success. He's not a Hall of Famer yet, but he's Mm -hmm. 100% going into the Hall of Fame. He has the pedigree being the son of Rey Mysterio and yet having a fraction of Rey's experience um, Mm -hmm. at at this point. So, so much more room for growth. He's going to stay in wrestling. He's going to continue to get better. And nobody is getting the heat that Dominic Mysterio is getting. And to give you some Hall of Fame credentials, Mari Forth, let me just call you out here, first and last name, is that, you know, he was the first person to main event Raw, NXT, and SmackDown in the same week ever in the history of mm. this business of wrestling. Okay. Hulk Hogan hasn't done that. Ric Flair hasn't done that. Roman Reigns hasn't done that. The Rock has done Dom Mysterio did it. Hall of Famer. Put him up there. Shucky ducky quack quack. I think I'm we done. call that the triple crown when you main event uh, all three of those shows. <laughs> Ari, your thoughts? I, I mean, look, I, I come from the sports world. You can you can scout someone, and you're supposed to look 10, 15 years into the future, and you're supposed to put okay. all of that pressure, all of those credentials to say, oh, yeah, future Hall of Famer. Now, here, here's the debate, though. Oh, no. Let's say Dominic's career ends today. <gasps> hmm is he a future mm. Hall of Famer today? I love that. And, yes. and if it ended today, I don't think so. But I would be sad. Like it's like I'm. I don't know. Like I. I. I think Dom is on such the perfect path that I think it's possible. But my thought process is he's so young, and we. And I want to see him, I want to see multiple characters. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is basically almost like his first character and it's working. So that's great. But can he, you know, in three years, is he a rootable baby face? Can he elicit the same reactions as a baby face that he does as a heel right now? You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm just saying, I think, I think he's there. He's, he's, he's a shooting star. But I don't know if I would, at this moment right now, say future Hall of Fame. 
Mari, so I guess you that means this. Ari is a tiebreaker. I will just say, wait. Let me just be. put this out ahead, there. Matt. Pete Rose is in the Hall of Fame. Andy Kaufman, actually, legendary. He's not. In the he Hall of Fame. Not in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> because wait, he's not? <laughs> he is no, wait, he's not? He's not in the WWE name. Hall of Fame? Oh, Pete oh, Rose. Oh, oh. In the, yeah. Like the major okay. League Come on. We thought you were William Shatner that. is in the WWE Hall of Fame. But that's the celebrity. Titus O'Neil is in the WWE Hall of Fame. Ura, ura, ura. Sure. Brutus <laughs> the Barber Beefcake is in the WWE Hall of Fame. Do I need a Kid right. Rock is in the WWE. Dominic Mysterio. Future Hall of Famer, not right now, but future. But he'll be there. Mari, does he? Does Mark he need words. to be a baby face? Uh, can he be a heel for the rest of his forever? Career? Can he do? <laughs> Is the John Cena of heels? Can he? Can he? That's a great question. Can we don't he? know. It's time for him. It's just time. It you you need time, and I don't think I don't think that's too much to ask. Like give him time. He's already great right now. I want to see it maintain over time, because oh, we've seen right plenty there. of flash and pan wrestlers where they come in there everybody says they're going to be the next big thing and then we look up and they're gone you know what i'm saying Marty, and i don't think that's him i'm not saying that's him i'm just saying time we don't know what can happen look and i'm just gonna say this mari when he's in the hall of fame you owe me twenty dollars uh I, with inflation with inflation for when it happens yeah, Mari, no, you so, won't owe me anything except you'll join me at the hall of fame speech so we can watch it together Yes. I'll so, well, Ari, Ari, you're you're the tiebreaker here. Do you? Ooh, it's a lot of pressure. Future all Hall right. of Fame or Rising so, Star? All right. So, Rising Star, Future Hall of Famer. Again, I, I have uh, come from a sports world, sports mentality, and there are some players from the moment they're 16 years old, they have the weight of the world on their shoulders. LeBron James mm-hmm. has been called the king, the goat, before he was able to smoke cigarettes or buy uh buy some lotto tickets <laughs> and yet here we are all these years later the scouts mm-hmm. they were correct his effort out onto the field before uh, he's won some championships uh dominic mysterio has finally gotten his hand on some gold and mm. i if the if the first word in the tier is future i'm gonna put dominic mysterio as a future hall of okay. Famer. That's where All we right. belong. That's fine. I, I Where's don't the bell? disagree. Hit the bell, Mari. Hit the bell. Do you I have don't. a bell? We need a bell. Wow. Ding, As Rocky, ding. Rocky Balboa once said, ding, ding. Ding, ding. Wow. Look at that. All right. Well, Ari, you're next. <laughs> yeah. Who else Let's should see what we... controversy you're going to stir up. Ugh, controversy? Yeah. Do, do I tend to be a controversial person? Now, uh, who Must are we going to pick on? Because Dominic, I, I had him as someone I really wanted to chat about. So coming up next. I think what we're going to end up doing is let's uh, let's talk uh, about another icon in the industry. Why don't oh. we talk about Roman Sting. Reigns? Oh, oh okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're on, we're, yeah. we're on a streak. I mean, we're we're talking about someone that is Wait. on a completely different other level. I had to and scroll up. Mar- I don't even. Mari put him. Think Mari put him. She put him under repackage. By the no, way, no, I didn't. I had to though. scroll up since we're. Super zoom. Where, you know what? I feel like future Hall of Famer isn't even fair for what Roman Reigns. I know. Oh. My man is on another <laughs> tier. Can we create a new God tier mode. in tier maker? <laughs> I mean, uh, what is there to talk about? He no. is. <laughs> well, he is. Shit. We'll, I think we'll I keep fix going. it. In keep post. talking, Ari. Oh, we've we've got we've got another tier for Roman, but. What he's wow. doing right now is some of the best work I've seen in the entire industry. Like Ro- Roman Reigns is just on another level. Every time, do you know what he did this week? All he did this week was sit on a chair and fold his arms, and it was the most captivating yeah. thing on the entire mm-hmm. show. He is so good, mm-hmm. and it, it, he's clearly bringing out emotion from Jimmy yes. and Jay, and utilizing Solo in, in the absolute best way. Uh, I feel like. Not only is he elevating himself and putting himself on another level, but he's directing traffic on elevating, I guess, his entire family. So a, a lot of, uh, uh, I guess, we got a lot of nepotism going on. But uh, that's just that's just the mode he's on. He, he can play God, right? Let me elevate the people uh, in my family. What do you yeah. say, Mari? Do you disagree? No, no notes, no notes. I will. I create. I will create a whole row, and it will 
but more than likely you'll be the only person on there yeah <laughs> i'm okay we can you know actually zoom back in so that it's like we can zoom back in because there's not <laughs> there, we're done we're finished with that one yeah <laughs> i think that I you're that right unfortunately or fortunately of, yeah matt i know matt might say some things but honestly yeah. roman <laughs> roman the bloodline the usos i know if it, it's long but every time they do something and they twist and they turn and i think it just can't get any emotion i can't get any more emotionally invested yeah. they prove me wrong you know what i'm saying each and every time and so he truly is on a whole nother level and this run has been spectacular to watch and i get people like why does he have to have the belt for three years i don't care because he's erasing all of those hateful racist people's um oh <laughs> uh, belt lineages <laughs> i like get them the out of here this will be the, <laughs> this is the one time where we are witnessing in the modern era somebody doing what you know they did in the past you know what i'm saying like this will be the only time and enjoy it i know you, i some people will be mad about it but i bet you three four years from now once roman once roman hangs it up because I, I don't i can't see him doing this for too much longer not on at this level um you're gonna miss this you're you're going to miss this so just enjoy it now you're witnessing history you're you're risk you're witnessing sports entertainment history enjoy it and I'm saying that specifically to Matt. Wow. Okay, wait. That was disrespectful. And I'll be quick on this because I agree. He belongs in the tier he belongs in. Now, uh, you know, not all wrestling is for everyone, but you know wrestling is for everyone generally speaking you know that's basically is that what you say mari wrestling is for everyone um, generally speaking at the end of the yeah, something generally like speaking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> sure let's go with that but no i mean he's great you know i i tend to really uh, gravitate to a lot of people who i'm like not getting so much of or want to see more out of but uh no notes on that he is in his own tier above everything and everyone else and of course he's like basically already in the hall of fame like we know that he's not even really a future hall of famer because he's like yeah pending hall of famer yeah, because if it is like Ari said, if it if his career stopped today, he's like first ballot, like no oh, question. One is hundred percent. They might even retroactively put him in because he's that. <laughs> <laughs> and and to the wait. point of how good he's been, right? We've been talking about the three year run. Ooh, I look I look at the roster. Who is even worthy of taking the the victory? Nobody. Who is even worthy of being that name that that in the wiki it says defeated Roman yeah. Reigns. Uh, uh, col uh, colon C and uh, and and uh, uh, the hypothesis or whatever, like the, the, the end <laughs> yeah. whatever it's called. Anyway, who who is going to be the one to defeat him? Like who who here is worthy? Not any of us. You know what it'll be? I think it'll be someone we have to repackage. <laughs> we need a we need yeah. a repackage someone. Wow, to take that's over a bold claim. The god tier. That's going to be interesting if it is someone who is. Let's follow that thread here. for the rest okay. of the pod. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Well, it's my turn, right? And okay, I think what are you I, doing? I, I think I will add to the first repackage. Uh, oh, tier. wow! And I'm I'm struggling uh, to decide between somebody who is currently in the midst of a repackage, or somebody uh -huh. who I think complete just needs a repackage altogether. Which one do y'all want me to? Which I one? think you should go with the all together, like go big or go okay. home. So I'm going to choose. Oh, Tana. no. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, I regret my, I regret it. Uh, I, the, yes. I'm like, I, I don't know what it is about Tegan Knox, And I, I've said this before, but like, she gives me absolutely nothing. It's, it's like, right. go girl, give us nothing and i don't i try i'm trying not to be mean but like i think it's because yeah. what so many years ago it's it's been at least like i want to say like five or six years i think she came into nxt around 2017 something sure. like that um i heard so many good things about her you know what i'm saying like her she coming from the the uh, she's Welsh, so coming from the, like the English based wrestling promotions, a girl with the shiniest wizard. Oh my god, she's mm -hmm. amazing! And I, I think they I expected so much from her that when she came to WWE, 
and through no fault of her own, unfortunately uh, endured so many injuries, like just back to back ACL mm -hmm. injuries that took her out for multiple, multiple years. I just could never connect with her. And I forget that she's on the roster. I forgot uh, this picture. I had to try and figure I I had to use context clues to remember who she was, even with this rainbow hair. It's like, it's just not giving. And I'm not sure what it can be gave to be quite mm -hmm. honest. Um, Ari, any thoughts on <laughs> Tegan Knox? I, I'm not opposed to the, to the repackaging because uh, I'm going to keep mm -hmm. it real. I didn't know who she was. So here's the mm -hmm. question. What do we repackage Tegan into? Uh, so as someone that gets hurt a lot, right, Tegan, a lot of mm -hmm. you know, ACL, MCL injuries probably affects your performance. It, it, the has, ring, how it has affected you're her moving. mobility, unfortunately, yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to rely mm -hmm. on y'all. How is Tegan on the mic? Is there a future for Tegan to be maybe more of a, of a manager, maybe more of a, oh. of a speaking role to take charge with something? Maybe Tegan can <laughs> elevate someone else. I mean, Ari, that's a no for me, dog. Um, but let me just say that, you know, she does come from a sports background. Like she played f uh, soccer, a.k.a. football, as football. Her people would call it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel like she does give a sporty vibe, which they don't explicitly lean into. And I can't think of, maybe either of you can, but I can't think of like a character that has had that other than like mixed martial arts mma like a character who's had that gimmick of being like the sports person who's coming into this pro wrestling game bringing their thing like i do think with the context of with the context of her sporting though like it's been a while to your point though with mr perfect and more of these occupational mm -hmm. gimmicks i would just like her to be like this soccer player who then she still keeps the shiny wizard but then it's like oh but she's a soccer player kicking you in the face you know mm -hmm. like make her a kick person she can mm -hmm. feud with her old tag team partner dakota no. kai over the mm -hmm. kick thing eventually you know mm -hmm. that could be a thing we've done that um, we've done that at nxt it was boring as shit but the soccer the soccer jersey mari Punch, punch mm -hmm. it up, punch it up. What else do you have for her? Because I'm, thought, pulling, I'm grasping at straws. My thought is it maybe um, pair her with uh, Piper Nevin. Pair her with Piper. I, I did think that. Yes. Yeah, that could be good because uh, Piper Piper can talk. Welsh? Is she Welsh? She, I can't remember if she. I know they're oh from. God, they're all from I the UK. For, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. They're from that area. So <laughs> I think what, Piper Niven is from. Um, it, the place, damn it! I thought Is I it just Scotland? was. Gonna... Was her in? Nikki I'll tell like... you where she's from. She's from Scotland. Yeah. Yeah, Scotland. Yeah. So honestly, if you kind of, if maybe we do like a UK takeover style, um, mm, uh, like stable, that. put together Piper, Nikki, and um, Tegan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe like get yes. making them all like punk who make them all kind of like Ruby Riot, like kind of what the I love the Riot, Riot Squad. Could I, I love the Riot Squad? So I like this. Like that. And could I just make a pitch that might be out there, but also I don't see how either of you could disagree with this. Could we just put Piper Niven next to Tegan Knox in the repackage with that? Because yeah. Great idea. I love Piper though. Yeah. And I had yeah, her on my well, list too, as like a, someone a who repackage. could use a repackage for very similar reasons. So mm. um, she's in there, Look but I, I like that. So I like that. Much. I also think that I think that they're both bisexual, I believe from what I've yes. from the um, information. Um, and yes. so, you know, it, there's a thing there. Maybe, maybe Piper could dye her hair too. Give I would love for them just all to dye their hair black, <laughs> to be quite honest. Like, oh, I, black. like something like that. Yeah. Give like full. Oh. Maybe like a Experience. maybe like a female House of Black, like a female WWE based House of Black. That's what yeah, I was like going with, email. right? Or, or mm -hmm. maybe something uh, similar to what Gunther is doing with his cronies, right? Yeah, like, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you know, with the WWE audience, we know how we we put the the Welsh yeah. and the Brits on. They're all they're all yeah. in one. Right? Oh, yeah. Accents. Smart uh -huh. accents. Like, come, they're all in come one and, stable. 
come in the ring and, and, and insult how fat Americans are. Talk about how, oh you know, beans on toast is the best thing and that you automatically <laughs> get people like mad at you. I know that's like several different cultures. I'm so sorry, guys. But, that's but like, point. you that's know what I'm saying? Like, WWE. yes, like, <laughs> like do that. Like be dicks. It's okay to be dicks. I think that's, I, a, that's I a good think... point for us to, I was going to say a good point for us to cut to commercial break on that note. <laughs> <laughs> right, Mari? <laughs> yes. Okay, well, we're, we're going to come back after our commercial break. Um, and yeah, I don't know how to do a commercial break. All, All right, right, we're so... back. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, so technically that's perfect timing. So, Piper Niven is your pick then? No, Piper Niven's my, my pick. I think she's our pick, but I have someone who's better to put in because we don't have okay. anything to say about Piper let's Niven. Let's just go. Yeah, let's so, go. Rising star, rising star. Okay. Woo. Look, again, nobody could disagree with this one because we have a queen who for years, ever since she was on Tough Enough in 2015, ha I've seen it, but the world is seeing it. Get Chelsea Green up here, Mari. Come on. Oh. No, not okay. no, not Sonia Deville. <laughs> <Chelsea Green. laughs> By the way, I, I just want to—I want to thank there. you for that because, yeah, put them both next. <laughs> you can put them next to each other, even because That's I have funny. to say, is it just me or has like, or maybe I've missed it, but like, I feel like no one's really talked about how they were both on Tough Enough together in twenty. Because I forgot, Matt. Me like, too. Until literally? me too. Until like <laughs> Sunday or Monday, and I was like, wait a minute, this looks familiar. <laughs> because when to, I, I think forgot. Tough Enough. When I think Tough Enough 2015, I think Sonia and Mandy, like they like yeah. killed it. Other than, you know, Sarah who won, rest in peace to her. Like mm -hmm. they they made that show to me. And so I totally forgot Chelsea Green was on there. I forgot Shotzi was on there. Like that wow. is that, that I, Tough I, Enough I, I was know. one of my favorite. It was one of my favorite Tough Enoughs. If they had got the voting, if they had got the like elimination thing, yeah, who's done that guy? Better, um, the, was the it, guy. Did, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I can't remember his name. He should have been gone. Like, yeah, <laughs> Let's go with Ziggy because I'm not gonna look it up. But that's I know I'm not gonna look it up. Yeah, and a uh, lot of good uh, talent had come from there. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. Redacted is was from there. It was a great season, oh. to be quite honest. And um, mm -hmm. but anyways, I'm sorry, Chelsea Green. What a dream! You were talking yes, about. Yes, that's Chelsea. all. No, that's all. I, I mean, think self brand new WWE Women's Tag Team Champion Chelsea Green. And I also will say she, you know, she had a lot of false starts in WWE for years. Yeah, she She's did. even released. Um, was she only released once, or am I making? I think she was released re twice. I think she was released twice. I do too. Yes, she was released twice, I and she's she back twice. at it again with the championships. And you know what? She returned at the Royal Rumble. I remember seeing her walk out, and even just like the charisma she was oozing. She has the in-ring skills. She has the character work skills with a little bit of like. It's not as simple as it being a Karen gimmick because yeah. she's able to bring that, but then also like the delusional heel. And I do think she has a lot, a huge career ahead of her as a baby face. Honestly, I was Honestly. tempted to put her and you should appreciate this Marie, but I was tempted to put her in the future hall of famer because, but I don't think that we need to see, we need to see mm -hmm. what they do with her. Dom yeah. is a future hall of famer. Chelsea green should be, but under rising star right next to Sonia Deville for sure. Um, I just want to say real quickly about Chelsea Green. She completely made me into a fan, turned me into a believer because mm -hmm. I was a part of that crowd. Like when she had gotten um released twice and you know she battled she got so many injuries like there were so many like on online people would be like oh my god is chelsea green made of glass because she would she would get into the ring do do one move and then boom wrist broken come back mm -hmm. uh she'd be well again get into the ring boom other wrist broken we were like what's going on with chelsea green's wrist and you yeah. know we you know we we're getting our jokes off and when I heard she was coming back, I was like, cool, great, you know, sure, whatever. But the moment she walked out in the Royal Rumble and gave mm -hmm. us that charisma, that character that, you know, 
I, ever since the Karenness, again, she's not afraid to be a villain or a delusional character, which you guys know I love a delusional heel. Mm-hmm. And I, I am so sold on her. And and that just goes like double for Sonya Deville. I expressed on this podcast so many times that Sonya Deville is one of my my favorite women's wrestlers. I loved her run as an authority figure and I'm still mad that her and Naomi didn't get a chance to um in their food fu- their feud on wrestle in WrestleMania. Um but both of them are they are like hitting the ground running right now. And I am so happy to see that they have the tag team championships. And I really hope WWE does something with them and the belt. Mm-hmm, Ari, mm-hmm. I, I would put them right at the rising star. I think one thing that separates them is they're good on the mic. They got some energy, right? They they're can move around up. a little yeah. bit. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I, I think uh, it's good. this is going to be a unanimous one. They are rising mm-hmm. stars, but I think they're rising stars together, right? And then uh, yeah. do something... We can do something down the line to elevate yeah. each other uh, with yeah. some sort of feud or... But yeah, they're main I event they're WrestleMania. In the right tier. They're mm-hmm. I consider Rising Star to be the ooh, show me more, and then I'll lean back mm-hmm. to see more. Yeah. Show me more. <laughs> yeah. Let's see some more. Yep. Mm-hmm. Do they need a cute team name though? I call them the complaint department. So Green until Deville. they have another, oh. until they have another, uh, <laughs> a, another name, they will forever be the complaint <laughs> department to me. I love it. <laughs> okay, so. Customer that service. Means it's your, customer service. <laughs> it's your turn, Ari. Who do you want right, to? Uh, yeah. You know what? And where? I'm and not sure where? How, I'm not sure how controversial this is going to be, but I want to talk about someone oh, no. who's been okay. with WWE for a very long time, and I need some help. Where do we oh. put Sheamus? Where does Sheamus belong? Now, Sheamus, uh, friend of the pod, friend of the pod, huge fan of Sheamus. Mm-hmm. He uh, okay. very. Uh, very uh, nicely uh, donated his time to some initiatives I've been I involved with. Uh-huh. Really small. <laughs> uh, but where does Seamus belong? He's not God tier. We know that. He's, he's not on another level. But do we get and I him mean, the employee, like the the, 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 the re- like some recognition? Thank you for being a longtime employee. Here's a lifetime achievement award. You're a future Hall of Famer. He's not a rising star. He's been, he's been with the company for uh, as far back as I can remember. Do, mm-hmm. Does he need a repackage to be a future Hall of Famer, or is he already there? No, Seamus is already there. He, he so his is, career is, ends today. We're gonna today. We're gonna hear a, we're gonna hear a speech, fella. To be to be quite honest, yes, because I think Seamus is so underrated. As somebody who completely missed his first run, like I completely missed his first run, like the when he won know. the uh, Royal Rumble, like around that that. 2000 between 2011 2013 ish like i completely missed his his first run as the baby face and so when i was introduced to him it was when he came back and he came back as the heel and though it was like the you look stupid like the heel the costing roman um his his belt a second after roman won the belt for the first time like I think Seamus is amazing because he's a, he's a chameleon. He can take gimmicks that like nobody would think would work and make it work. He he got the bar like nobody expected him and Cesaro and the bar to be like a legitimate tag team. We thought they were just thrown together and that it would last maybe like two weeks. And it was one of the biggest tag teams ever. They they dethroned the um longest reigning tag team champs in um the new day at the time. Like Sh- Seamus is the person who can take chicken shit and make it into chicken salad. I am still currently waiting mm. for him to to um win the intercontinental championship so he can finally claim that that um the wow. uh, the trip, crown uh, the triple crown slam. or whatever grand slam grand yeah slam crown <laughs> yeah so i i love i love shame it's like friend of the pod withstanding like i i'm i'm so sold on him and i and i <laughs> and i initially again i met him as a heel so i was like boo boo and then on top of yeah. that when you when you hear all the stuff that he does behind the scenes and like how like the whole locker room loves him you know he is triple h's bestie so there's no there's no way he's not going into the hall of fame deservedly so yeah and i mean i i i have to agree because 
I mean, I really could see a world where people would put him under repackage. Maybe he's not doing the most exciting stuff now, but I think that rather than a repackage, I would just lean into what he's already doing, giving him more mic time, giving mm -hmm. him like a really prominent run. Because if you look at it, he's achieved so much. Like he won the Royal Rumble match. He won King of the Ring. He won mm -hmm. Money in the Bank. Like, mm -hmm. And like to your point about him being a Grand Slam champion, he has even just in terms of championships and positions that they put him in, achieve more than so many people. So mm. I'll go with that. Seamus, you get the respect, but I really wanted to disrespect that man because, you know, he's great, but <laughs> he was so good I, mean, the I just feel like he would fit in so well next to his other UK queens from, you know, we get little Wales, Don't little Scotland, <laughs> a little bit of Ireland, but no, we're, he's going to break the, happen. break, break the cycle and Seamus, you are him, a future Hall of Famer. Him and Gunter had one of the best matches at WrestleMania this year. Like, oh, hell yeah. And, and Drew, Drew was there, right? Was he? Sure. Yeah, sure three, he right. was. Yes. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. They were hitting yeah. each other hard. They were hitting each other hard. Exactly. And that's my point. That is my point. I am not a big meaty men slapping meat type of person. Like, those matches are normally I in my book. That match, I was like, whew, gobsmacked at how good that was. So, mm -hmm. I love Seamus. You know what? When right. when I first started, I was leaning towards future Hall of Famer, but I, I feel like this is going to be another unanimous one. Uh, and and I think above all else, you guys are talking about like uh, there doesn't need to be a repackage because he's kind of already doing it, right? Who yeah. who here on this list can wear suspenders down to the ring and look like a badass? <laughs> who here can put on a bowl hat and be like, yeah, this right. is credible? I, you know what? Yeah. I think I think I think what Seamus stands for is stability and credibility, and all of those Thank have you. abilities. So I feel like no matter what yeah. match he's in, if he's on there, I'm watching and. And should he lose, he doesn't lose any credibility. It actually enhances the opponent. And when he wins, I'm like, yeah, that's what I thought. So, <laughs> you know what? Future Hall of Famer, uh, Seamus can actually do it all. So, uh, yeah. face, heel, everywhere in between. Uh, and he can even do voiceover work for uh, for Ninja Turtles movies, which you got you yeah. got you got a spotlight. You got a spotlight. Which is so stable. Yes, mm -hmm. he's survived the celebrity wing. He survived so much. He survived multiple presidential administrations here in the U.S. Like, good for that man. He's been around. He survived heat waves, right? And he going. still maintains uh -huh. his complexion. Yeah, oh my gosh, that's the most impressive. Yo, part, his probably. complexion is so. It. I. I love how you can just see his scars on his on his body. Like that man is creamy. All right, uh, uh, <laughs> let's, let's. It's my pick. <laughs> and I think this is a very, very controversial one. I think we're, this might. Ooh, where do you want to put in. them? Ooh, Wait, where are you up. putting them? Where are you putting oh, yeah. them first? Like, what's the category? It's a them. Yes, I will be putting them <laughs> in the rising star category. I don't like how you're like, Mari, anyone watching the video is <laughs> probably as like stressed and anxious as I am watching Mari <laughs> scroll over everybody. Just hit random on the character select cursor. screen. Who's your who fighter? Are you put, who are you going to put I, in Rising Star? Bobby I'm going to put LA Knight in oh. the Rising Star category. Okay. Last week, yeah. Matt. <laughs> Matt no, I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I agree. He said, he said, who, who likes LA Knight? Like, why is LA <laughs> Knight over? And it I was a got a question. It was, it was, and I got, uh, I got a response, uh, from somebody. From so, from um, who? actually, they can remain anonymous. No, don't talk yeah, to them like that. It's a Twitter user. They they reach oh. out to me via DM, and they weren't mad or anything like that. Um, so, uh, he said, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna read it. Okay. So, why is LA Night over? Uh, they feel like it's a combo of his look. And his sound is nostalgic of the rock and mm. stone cold, etc. Nostalgia plays right. well. We ta we've talked about this before. LA Knight definitely draws from the school of the rock. Like he basically copies him. Um, he feels authentic and not forced slash scripted when he's talking, which is better than most on the current roster. The crowd is normally a problem in WWE, mm -hmm. you know, wanting to be involved, wanting to chant, sometimes hijacking the shows. We've talked about this. Um, uh, but 
LA Knight's catchphrases lend to crowd participation and crowd interaction. So, you know, the let me talk to you. Yeah. And uh, LA yeah. Knight. Yeah. Which help him further resonate and get those loud pops. Mm-hmm. When people get hooked by the flash and uh, and learn his story to get where he was, it makes you feel better that he's organic and not a forced character. So, yeah, I completely agree. Agree to that. Yeah. Shout out to the Twitter user Dagon Watson on uh, Twitter. Shout out to Dagon. Yeah, and um, I, I'm pretty sure that's a username, but uh, I I agree. Like oh, I Watson. get it. Like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he's a rising star in the WWE. The crowd is solidly behind him. Like I said, like a few weeks ago, I don't understand what the hesitancy is to pull the trigger on him. Maybe again, they're waiting until like, you know, maybe they're waiting until we get closer to WrestleMania time or something like that to pull the trigger on him. But the crowd is solidly behind him. And I, uh, I completely agree that I think it's the interactions and stuff like that. Wouldn't put him in future Hall of Famer. I understand he has a he had a long career in TNA and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And he's done he's done fabulous things over there, but he's over here now. And you know, a lot of us don't know specifics what are those things he did over there as Eli Drake in TNA. So I think he he's he's great. The only thing he has working against him is he is older. I think he's past his 40s or something like that. Um, or in his Season 40s, 40. early 40s. Holy. He's yeah, seasoned. exactly. He's been because he's been doing this. He's been doing this wrestling <clears throat> since 2005 when he was on that. He was on that show with The Rock, um, that that what? action show. We were talking about when it. Was, our, wait, what? Since when? Remember one of our guests? I can't remember who it was. Brought up. He was on that reality show with The Rock from years ago. The next great I, action star or something. But like I thought that, that show oh, was like. Well, didn't that show happen in like 2015? maybe 2011? No, I don't maybe, know. Yeah. I don't know when it, it happened. Was, but yeah, it, maybe like 2011 or something. But he's yeah, he's been in and out of the wrestling business for at least a decade. 2013, now. the hero in 2013. 2013. Never would have okay. remembered that show. Yeah, but so for 10 him, years ago. Hero. So yeah, I don't. I don't remember it. it uh, yeah, it's a show. Yeah, yeah. It got one show, season. Family. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It did not watch. So that's why I'm gonna put him, uh, Matt. Do you have... No, you're good. That's perfect. Okay. He belongs in Rising Star. I'm glad you didn't put him in future Hall of Famer. But I could mm-hmm. I could agree with that. But no, he's a Rising Star. No question about it. Um, you All know, right. not yeah, my he... cup of tea. <laughs> so why isn't he X-Pac Heat then? If he's not your cup of tea? No, no. I think... Well, because he's... Because... It's me. And I know yeah. I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm a, I'm no I'm wrong I'm la- I'm happy you're loud and wrong like what do you think this podcast is I'm wrong right Mari like listeners let me know when I've been right <laughs> tell me if I'm telling lies it'll, tell me if I'm be, telling it's, no it, no Matt just, Matt says it Matt just says it, he's not for him and that makes sense and that's fine and you know yeah. I I I like him enough but he's not he he doesn't have a consistent story like he came out on smackdown last night and all he did was just read hit row down to the ground before he won which is fine he's great on the mic you know mm-hmm. he does he reminds me of uh he's, he's a rising up. star he reminds me of like a mm-hmm. like a tiktok it's 15 seconds it's random you don't know where it came from <laughs> uh and yeah. then it ends and then you move on to the next thing but and you're 15 like cool. seconds they were very good he is They're very, very good entertaining very, yeah. A lot of chemistry. It is organic. I think above all else, that's it is what, organic. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I think that's People where his love. value is. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I'm into him. I, I like what he's about. Uh, yeah. He knows what he's doing. I think he he, he seems like a natural, like out there. Yeah. He's talking. Yes. I agree with that. He's not. Uh, yeah. he's, he's, he's not remembering have- uh, who he's mad at. Yeah. I have yeah. to look into his story a little bit more because I, I know he's been trying to get into the WWE for years, but I don't know what story they were t- they were referring Mari, to. So I'll look he's into apparently it. A, he's so he's 40, like you mentioned. Yeah, 40. Mm-hmm. Uh, for November 1st. Not that there's anything Aaron wrong with you. that. No, no, no. He's But I say that actually because he's like kind of, he's not old. You know, he's relatively, like look at AJ Styles and a lot of these other people. He just hasn't had the Shinsuke. opportunities mm-hmm. yet. Shinsuke, many others who are over 40 and maybe in their prime, arguably, depending on who we're talking about. He's also from Maryland, Mari. He's a local yeah, yeah. ish boy. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying. Um, I see it. I I I see it. I just don't feel it, but I want to feel it. I'm ready to feel it. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. More, send more DMs to Mari about why you love LA Night. Yeah. <laughs> All um, right, Matt. I think it's my turn. Yes, I think it it's is. my turn. And Mari, so you actually referenced like, oh, should I um, repackage someone who's kind of in the middle of repackage? I think I know who you had in mind, but I'm not going to go with that person. Okay. Because I'm going to go with this very empty, lonely X-Pac heat tier. We don't have anyone yeah, under that we don't have anybody yet. There Who's going to be yeah. the first honorary member? Mm -hmm. You know what, Mari? I'll tell you. Ari, I'll tell you. Uh -huh. This is the most obvious pick of my life. Lacey Evans, come on down. <laughs> Girl, Captain, Marine, um, mil military, um, um, fighter. I don't know what, uh, uh, I don't have other terms. Like, you know, she's, what is there? What's going on with her? Nothing. Um, I've seen stories lately of her that W, and I don't, you know, take them with a grain of salt. Who knows how true this is? But the Sportster, again, not the most reliable outlet, but they've talked about how WWE has reportedly given up pitching creative ideas for Lacey Evans mm. um, and allegedly have thrown their hands up in the air for her because she can't seem to gain any positive traction, which like, mm. yeah, girl, like you are, you know, I, I see so many beautiful things for Lacey Evans outside the wrestling business. She loves guns. You know, I think yeah. find some targets to shoot at. She mm -hmm. could go back to the Marines. Mm -hmm. But I just don't think that, you know, I don't think it, she, I don't think she must be feeling it. And I don't think anyone else is feeling it. So she yeah. goes in the X Pac heat category. I truly don't understand what happened with Lacey Evans because I, agree. I remember I remember when she debuted in um the Mae Young Classic. I remember when she was in NXT and she was a yeah. solid baby face. I mm -hmm. remember rooting for her when she was a, a baby face. Totally. And then it's like they she turned heel, and I guess people just couldn't get that taste out of their mouth about her healness. And you know, she said some questionable things on and off the, the screen. Like and what? but it also and it also feels like <laughs> like it I don't know it felt like her wrestling uh actually regressed as well. I felt like she was a way better wrestler in NXT than once she moved to the main roster. Mm -hmm. Um I just don't know. And and then because they were so confused about their character, I don't know if it's all her fault. You know what no. I'm saying? Like it's yeah, I it's definitely right. It's like the booking decisions, the the freaking three months of vignettes where we were so confused, <laughs> so confused about why we're getting her childhood trauma dumped on us. We know so like, much about her childhood trauma. It we're was, her therapists. I, it was so confusing on so many levels. And I feel I do feel bad for her, but you're right. I don't I turn the channel every time she's on. I just this just might not be her game you know what i'm saying like this might just yeah. not be the thing for her like matt said like sh this might not be it i hate um, to say it but do you i i mean it, i do yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, it it pains you i can Mark. see it for, for those yeah. for those listening that don't have the video uh, watch the video on on uh, RHTV, and you, you can see the pain in Mari's face. It'll be worth the price of admission. Uh, Mari, can you give Evans, us another I do is... again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like, just like we, you guys. It's fine. All right, what's it's going fine. on? <laughs> yeah, please. Let's we can keep moving. Lacey Evans. We keep moving. The the oh my model. god! Yeah. Is the pinup uh the pinup model uh yes yeah, she, sure, yeah yeah so, she used to be more of one so for for what an amazing bio uh this is a special military forces special reaction team entrepreneur but we get introduced to her by saying she's a pinup model and starts duking it like just the lady uh, of wwe that makes no sense uh um, yeah she, uh, anyway uh uh she hasn't been on we, tv in forever uh Lacey Evans is like a like a deleted scene in a movie. Oh. Dang. 
harsh savage yeah how dare you oh i know no how no no i you? i yeah no it's just <laughs> no it's true it, it truly is like i it's maybe it's because they never stuck with any of her she she's gotten repackaged more th that's why she's not a repackage because she's gotten repackaged more than i think anybody else on this roster <laughs> like they tried repackaging her like three times straight mm -hmm. but i think th the biggest problem is Th that was that was kind of the problem they never repackaged her and stuck with it you know what i'm saying and they never like when they would repackage her it was too gray like they could never figure out yeah. like what they wanted to do and i don't know why like honestly if you're gonna go with the full like she's a patriot wink wink she's a conservative wink wink like mm -hmm. go with lean it in. you know what i'm saying lean in like just lean in i think maybe yeah. the problem with her is it's a different generation like nobody wants to see those americana based faces you mm -hmm. know because there's no foreign heels objectively foreign heels anymore and then they don't feel as comfortable making the americana personality as an uber heel and i feel mm -hmm. that's kind of what what they kept doing with her they 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 kind of wanted to make make her an american heel but then they weren't going far enough like i think they could have done something when she had started adopting the cold cobra clutch and going like full sergeant slaughter but it was like they just didn't i don't know but like no I, i'm with you they didn't commit like that's the commit, theme with her yeah. i think the other thing too is that it just doesn't all add up in the right ways like she does have a really um you know, like a story that we don't often see, a backstory personally that we don't often mm -hmm. see represented in WWE and in characters. Um, I'm just looking at her Wikipedia even and this quote from, I think, an article she gave to ESPN where she's talking about being raised in a home torn by depression and drug and alcohol abuse. And that's real. And there are a lot of people who could relate to that. I think if you approach that in the right way, that's not trying to like mix that with this Marine thing. Um, and just make her this badass who's like, yeah, I've grown up in these really hard things and I'm just going to be like this scrappy fighter, like not someone who feels the need to like dump that trauma on everybody, but someone who's like, you know, maybe she like goes back to Mari, you might remember back in um, NXT and back actually, I guess really before she was even on the show, there was some stuff where she had like the curly, like not done mm. up hair, like not the makeup and everything. And I think that could have actually worked with her in the repackage, but it was just really confusing because we got like five segments, six segments maybe, but it was definitely at least five of her just mm -hmm. talking about like the trauma from her childhood from before she was in WWE. And like, that's not going to automatically get people to love you. We know that. Yeah. Um, and WWE's and it writing so team did not know that. It we talked about it. <clears throat> we talked about yeah. it. She was just, she was just in, like straight to camera. She was just straight to camera to, unloading her drama to us. And yeah. we were like, this isn't how you do that. Like, yeah. show her on her farm. Show her we had notes, like yeah. dune buggies. Like, they could have. Yeah, I, I don't totally blame her for no, it. Yeah, not at yeah. all. I don't think it was actually at all her thought, fault, except for the fact that she doesn't seem to me to be like the most likable. Mm -hmm. So I think that that also doesn't help. Like if you're likable in general, I think that you can overcome a bad gimmick, but then mix that with like just some other stuff that might be off-putting um, in your background, whatever it might be. Like, you know, it just doesn't work. So I don't think she'll be around too much longer from what we've been seeing very recently um, and all the best to her wherever she goes, whatever happens. And who knows, maybe she, they'll turn it around, but uh, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Before we move on to the next one, yeah, is, is Lacey yeah. a better heel or a better face? Neither. N yeah. Neither. <laughs> like, oh, you know, had, we're we're going to give her a been, Go ahead. I was just going to say, she hasn't been a face in like, since, like, since she was in NXT. Ah, okay. To me. So, so not, okay. but also she, they tried to face ish. They, I guess they didn't really truly try to make her a face, Mari, but they, against Charlotte. She no, still no. That. Yeah, she's no, I mean like in the repackage, because we were like, is this a face oh, gimmick right. where she's 
Yeah. But then she kind of came out as a heel. Heel, so... yeah. It didn't make sense. But yeah, people clapped for her. It was weird. Yeah, Ari. No, nope, that's the All problem. Right. So I'm going to do a Hail Mary repackage for Lacey Evans. It says on her WWE bio, she's also uh -oh. opened her own construction company. So we're talking a businesswoman. <laughs> How many businesswomen uh, uh, gimmicks do we have? None, right? That would gimmicks. be great. Like, They're I think all that's women. the way to go. She's a, she's a, you know, like a JBL. Here's the badass <laughs> business lady telling people what to do, right? Maybe, yeah. maybe that's the way. In a really southern it's accent. Very, it's really tough. Oh, brilliant. It's really tough to hate military people. Ooh, you like you don't even want to encourage that. But we can no. hate some entrepreneurs, some business people. Give I her a tie. That. That's a great point. With, 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 a, with a leather uh, a portfolio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's, I like it. Uh, one vote for like make it a female JBL. No, I'm gonna leave her an X Pac heat. Yeah, we'll keep it there. <laughs> give that give Let's it to go. someone else. I like that, but give it to someone All right. else. Speaking of X Pac heat, you know what? This uh this next person, I I, I wanted to like them. I wanted to give them a chance. Uh, I like the flippies, I like the, the flippy flops, <laughs> how they do it, but it's just not working for me. I, I do uh I, I think it's at least for me, um uh Oh man, I'm, I'm forgetting forgetting his name. Uh, Ricochet. There we go. Lovely I knew Ricochet. it. Oh, say that. Let's put him. Let's nah, put some X Pac. Ricochet. Very Mari. No. Oh, there he is. <laughs> it's very lonely at the bottom. Let's make sure X Pac Heat isn't all by itself. Let's put Ricochet Wait. in there. My, I my guy. Do that. I, I finally cannot. heard him. Do it. I do finally it. Heard no, him. Mari. Mari. Try Hold to on. do his best. I can't do that. Ari, Ari, we have to pause for a second. I need to speak with Mari. Mari, our guest, yes. we have a guest right now. You have to show respect. I know we have a guest. Put, put Ricochet under X-Pac heat for now. Okay. Until we vote. Until the final vote. Bye, Until we vote. We know okay. where my vote is. X-Pac heat. I saw him wearing the the the, the, the shirts that uh, the, the, the kids in the anime club used to wear when I was in middle school. He was cutting a promo on uh, wearing one of those. And... Uh, but he had the 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 the, the presence of uh, of an elementary elementary school drama kid. Like it was just mm. no good. It was <laughs> terrible. Stick to flipping, uh, or just get off my screen. Enough with the Damn. ricochet. I, I've seen enough. I've seen enough. I give him a chance. I wanted to like him. I like the flips. I like anyone that has moves with numbers in them. <laughs> 360 splash. I can't. I can't. I can't let this go unchecked. He he does not deserve to be an Xbox Heat because mm. as as my it's kind of weird because I'm kind of using a different defense I guess uh, that I did for like La Knight, but because I have personally been uh, up to date with his career outside of WWE, you know, watching Lucha Underground and stuff like that, he is a great wrestler. Okay, he does need work on the mic skills, but I don't think it's, I don't, I would love to see him more. I think he needs more reps. So that's why I, I wouldn't put him in go away. Plus, I think he needs a, a, a repackaging because he right now does not really have a gimmick. He needs a gimmick. He needs a gimmick so he can play up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I agree. Just saying, like, you can't give him the TJP. It's like, I'm a nerd. I'm a gamer. Like, you can't i do flips no like give him something i think if they gave him like him as prince puma and lucha underground was amazing of course he said nothing and he had his own manager can we try mm. that somewhere can we give uh ricochet a manager or something like that it's not like he's you know dating the voice of the company at this point you know maybe do something on screen with them like you had that like they had started doing earlier this year that got us so invested you know what i'm saying like i think he deserves to go in and repackage because i think he's a great mm -hmm. wrestler a great superstar he just needs that push he needs something he needs that gimmick that's going to get him over the hump matt this is this is fascinating i kind of just want to sit back and stay out of it and watch this <laughs> break to go back and forth all right but you know what i i do have to say i think that Ricochet has so much potential, um, and he hasn't been soured yet. Like they, he's in right. what can be maybe the biggest one of the feud feuds. Of yeah, the I'm excited it's about it. Logan mm -hmm. Paul. So clearly mm -hmm. they're trying to do something with him, um, but I agree. Like he does need some work because I don't feel like the 
current work with Logan Paul is actually flattering him all that much. Like it's not bringing him to the level that I think he needs to be. But, and so I would repackage, I would repackage. And I like what you're going with Mari. I mm-hmm. like something around, I like the fact that he's a gamer, but not like a basic, like, oh, I'd like to play video games. You know, for me, I'm thinking of the CBS hit show, Big Brother, because mm-hmm. I know he's a fan. Samantha Irvin, his uh, girlfriend, is a f- fan. Are they married? Mm-hmm. Married. His know. wife. Are they I married? Mean, look, I don't know. All I know is that on Wikipedia, Shout it, out says to them. We love them. it says spouse, Samantha Irvin, M2023, which I'm assuming means married. But really? Not, then uh, 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 maybe I don't know how to read Wikipedia, but they're definitely together. Love them. They're definitely together. They're definitely together. Uh, mm-hmm. They became engaged in 2023. So maybe they're just engaged. But either way, I could see them doing like a showman's gimmick that's more of like a heel thing. Yes. Where he they propose. just become really hateable. Of course. And... We, we covered the proposal on here. Duh. Did we? Anyway, sorry. We did. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's the forgettableness. So I'm just saying... Wife repackage be. this man mm-hmm. repackage this right. man because so, mostly so I, because samantha yeah, so irvin is Ugh, samantha I irvin is such a gem that uh i think that there's more that they could do together it'd be interesting to see ricochet with the relationship and all that fun stuff so <laughs> so mari are, are we voting are we voting against ari are we voting against ari ariel to move ricochet to repackage we right, have so to I, i'm sorry been, ari i'm you just sorry got vetoed. i've been vetoed but that's okay Guess yes what? you've been before, vetoed. <laughs> before we do move on though right so I i'd like to play the power of veto <laughs> anything <laughs> that you say are <laughs> ricochet, you are off the block and you are Get no off the block, ricochet. there we go yes <laughs> all right there we go so so Ricochet is off the block, but oh let's talk God, about I this. He's that. in a repackage, right? Mm-hmm. He's not yeah. in the God tier. Well, forgetting, oh, forgetting how success looks like for him. What is his limit? What is his ceiling? Is his ceiling rising star? Is his ceiling future Hall of mm. Famer? So let's talk about mm. that before we move on. As of right now, without a proper gimmick, the ceiling mm-hmm. can only be Rising Star because okay. we have to see the Rising Star is the potential. So we we need the repackage for the potential. Um, yeah, that's that's all I can really say. Okay. I think he's a Hall of Famer outside of WWE, but inside of WWE, he needs he, he just needs he just needs that one he just needs that one gimmick that'll get him over. And I think and I feel like it's just right there. Like me and Matt are saying, it's like right at the it's right there you know like he's on the I, we can see some kofi kingston in him where yeah kofi wasn't well, talking so much then he had the, uh-huh. the accent that wasn't natural mm-hmm. and then next thing you know <laughs> yeah next thing you know he is being talked about not just on things like espn but you know uh, cbs like he's being interviewed mm-hmm. him uh, nationally mm-hmm. for what he's accomplished so okay okay yeah. i'm still with the x-pac heat but but i'm being outnumbered here and i will respect the decision Thank you, Ari. Yes. Uh, okay, so it's my turn. Um, oh, let's see. God, it's Mari's turn. I this is very emotionally involved. This is very involved. It let's is, but this. because we, because Lacey Evans is still very, very lonely on that X Pac heat here. Oh! I, oh, no. I think I am going to. We after this, we got to like pick some like we got to talk positively. No, I might. My, my um, next one, I'll say, will be. Oh hell, no, Mari! What the hell? Yes. Why you, like no one mentioned. Oh my god! I know this is a podcast, and I know it no is. one knows who you just chose, but that's choosing violence, Mari. Just some people we don't need to talk. <laughs> is about. it choosing violence? What's his name, Matt? Because I feel like you forgot what his name is. <laughs> exactly. R- I R- just, uh, Richard. I, I Ma- just picked Moss. Mad. Yes, Madcap Moss, aka Riddick Moss. I put oh, him yes. at X Pac <laughs> Heat. I'm done with him. You're done. Get out of here. They tried to do the him and Happy Corbin slash Baron Corbin. Um, like they were yeah. the team. Hated them as a team. When they when they split, I didn't care that they split. I. Half of me wants to feel bad. Like I real, I do really feel bad when I'm talking about people like this. You know what I'm saying? 
but it's just it's just not for me and unfortunately like for him they've tried they've tried to get him over in so many ways he was he was in nxt with uh tino savatelli for a long time that was actually a mm -hmm. pretty good um pairing as a team unfortunately for him mm -hmm. tino got um got released and he was by himself on nxt and they brought him up to the main roster way too early um the pairing with baron corbin was kind of okay but it's baron corbin baron corbin himself sometimes has x pac heat um so i once they broke up i didn't care right now he's wearing black trunks y'all he's wearing wow. black trunks. like literally they they I, I was hoping he's wearing he black was, trunks which I, I wouldn't even know because exactly <laughs> he hasn't been on no. tv for a while <laughs> the last time we saw him on tv it looked like his emma has come back emma it's his partner and girlfriend yes. and it looked like they were they were hinting at an on-screen romance and i was like yes let's try and do it let's try and get them both out there no 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 don't do that to her i mean i know that they're technically yes. i know that they are actually together in real life but i would rather see emma paired emma. with somebody else as an on-screen romance if anyone because why like you can't what? just be in a relationship and then that leads to you having a thing we love ricochet and samantha Irvin. that works I love emma but riddick moss come on Sorry. I, I agree but i Rebook think if that. like emma emma's coming back to the company after like five years away so yeah i I get it, but I feel like it is a way f immediately for both of them to have something. But to why do. does he have but to be in a relationship done. with her on screen? Because they're it's acting. He, he needs the rub. He needs the rub. That's let's true. be That's let's fair. be quite clear. That here. is true. <laughs> Riddick is the one that needs the rub from Emma. It is for him. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big oof. I mean, Sorry. honestly, though, I would probably Sorry's replace Googling him with, like, I would probably, like, I would, <laughs> I just would say, like, other people I could see in that dynamic, like, I would put Emma with, like, Dolph Ziggler first, with Logan Paul first, with, uh, you know, maybe we could do a thing with, like, um, what's his name, Dexter Lumis, like, just, you know, there's a lot of other no, options, I'm just Dexter saying. Dexter Lumis so. is a married man, sir. <laughs> I mean, polyamory is a thing, Mari. I don't know his situation. Nope. Stop trying to steal Indy's man. <laughs> She's trying to sabotage her. Um, if, Lacey Ari, Evans, you, if Lacey Evans is the lead scene, I feel like Mad Cat Moss has been uh, cut from the script altogether. Like, he didn't even make yeah. it to, he didn't make it to the <laughs> yeah. table read. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a dark he's man. Beyond X -Pod. I remember when I first saw him. He, all right, let's talk about how badass Seamus is. He wears suspenders, looks cool. Mm -hmm, Cat Moss mm -hmm. wears suspenders. Uh, when I first saw him, oh, yeah. I was like, is this a male escort limit? I forgot gimmick? about that. What's <laughs> happening? As someone that goes in and out with the wrestling watching, uh, he threw mm -hmm. me off. I didn't know what was going on here. Is he? I, I thought he was the next version of like Val Venus or something. That's yeah so oh i wish i forgot I wish. about him wearing suspenders i love val venus yeah. honestly and i'm not going to give him the repackage treatment but i mm -hmm. think you nailed something there the val venus type of gimmick with him alongside emma money or you know at least like uh, a little more sense. interesting or than the black trunks yeah yeah <laughs> bitcoin, bitcoin <laughs> crypto gimmick <laughs> all right let's move on we've we've spent way too much time and you know what Speak, speaking of uh too much time i think it's time that we go to a commercial break all right we're back look at that look at me with my commercial breaks right now look at you, are yeah. you proud of me are you proud i am sure you. it's your thank turn you. let's go thank you thank you so look on i'm gonna we've been in the in the in a ditch for a while with we some of these been. people i mean even just talking about riddick moss and lacey evans has really upset me but i want to go yeah. with someone who is a future hall of famer okay. mari i like your scrolling because i see them no you're no 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 don't keep scrolling okay i don't even have anything to say about this person because i think it's so self-explanatory Rhea ripley future hall of famer in my book put her oh. up there put the queen up there because right now and you know okay we'll have a conversation about it because i do think it's 
Some people might put her in the rising star tier. For me, she's a future Hall of Famer. Um, she'll mm -hmm. continue to do things like in the Dominic Mysterio realm. I actually think, you know, maybe they'll be inducted together if we continue to play mm -hmm. our cards right or not. But she is like tied in with so much of what's happening in this moment in WWE um, that I think that this is going to keep going. We're seeing her tied in with the world championship picture. We're seeing her tied in with the women's championship picture. We're seeing her mm -hmm. tied in with the men's tag team champions. Seeing her tied in with the NXT picture. We're seeing her do it all because she can. She brings it all to the table. And if she's not a future Hall of Famer, something has to go astronomically wrong. She's already a star. I can't put mm -hmm. her in the rising star tier. So for me, it's future Hall of Famer. But I'm curious, Mari, mm -hmm. what you think about Rhea Ripley as a future Hall of Famer. I I don't disagree. I, you're right. Future Hall of Famer. No, I don't. Like I said, I don't disagree. You're right. You can't put her in rising star because she is a rise. She is a star. Like yes, I agree. She she will be among the women of like like some of the first ballot hall of famers uh, um, among the modern women. I think she mm -hmm. has a long career ahead of her and I'm very anxious to see what she does with it. Like in a good way, because I think she's already proven that she can come through like some of the, like the lower stuff and still survive and keep, you know her mint momentum because we talked about mm -hmm. it before she had that she had a lot of momentum in nxt uk came to nxt kind of lost a little bit of that momentum got that momentum back was the nxt women's champion came to the main roster lost a lot of her momentum taking a lot of losses that i didn't think she needed to take but she was able to still stay on like the minds of the public to now being one of the main movers and shakers of the WWE. Like one of the reasons why we're not looking at clips this week is because it was just her and judgment day all over the clips again. Mm -hmm. And as much as we love judgment day, I cannot, again, I cannot talk about them four weeks in a row. You know what I'm saying? Like they're just that dominant. And I agree. Uh, future hall of famer. Great. No book. It. That, that, no, his name is Dominic, not dominant. <laughs> I love uh... mommy. Give me more yeah. mommy. I, you know what's fascinating about Rhea? I already know where Rhea is going to go. She's a future Hall of Famer for me as well. And mm -hmm. number one, she stands on her own singles. Mm -hmm. And she's in the Judgment Day and stands mm -hmm. with that. And not just stands with it, but I, from my perspective, she's the leader of the group. Honestly. How often do we yeah. see like the, the, the lady of the group being the actual leader? The one that Damien Priest, who Dominic, they're the ones that look up to her. That's fascinating like to see on screen. Uh -huh. um, it is. I think it's really cool. And uh, like to your point that it's going to be a lot of Judgment Day clips, it's because of how well two of the three of these Hall of Famers we've got on the list are performing and are really, really engaging with the fans. Uh, I'm into everything she does. Uh, promo thing, yeah. work, ring work, even just the small reactions to things. Um, mm. It's about the little things, right? And for a three-hour show, every time Rhea's on screen, it feels like every every movement with her face matters, and everything she does is uh, with purpose. And so I'm mm -hmm. with y'all. This is a this is a future Hall of Famer for me. I'm enjoying what I'm watching. I'm looking forward to what's next. And and there's what's beautiful about her is there's even potential to 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 elevate and evolve what she's currently doing to to even be even better. So now the mm -hmm. question is: Is there potential? For Rhea to enter a god mode. Potential. Mm -hmm. Is there yeah. potential? Right. There's potential. I mean, I think the biggest thing getting in her way, honestly, is the way that WWE historically has booked women. And not even historically, but just even some of what we've gotten under Triple H. I do think she can mm -hmm. be transcendent, like a Lita as an example of someone who's like also in there with the men, mixing it up in those spots. So I do think there's potential, but it's not because I don't believe in her. It's because I just am skeptical about the system actually pushing her there but she she could hold up she could she could do it there she could be the face of the company if they really put strapped a rocket to her and they all there's a rocket on her but 
yeah. at the Roman Reigns level, Roman's still up there by himself just from what he's done already. Yep, exactly. Yep, yeah, Ray yep. is so good. R- really All right, Ari, move on. I, it, I do need. It, a, I need. I, need, I want to tell a nice story about Rhea Ripley. So, I, oh my very gosh. quick. Uh, I was at I was at a live show, Madison Square Garden, and as you do after the show, I was loitering, waiting for my train, mm-hmm. and in the uh, locker room. I, <laughs> as you do, <laughs> as you wait mm-hmm. for the train, and who do I see? This is New York City, and so uh, there are very unique looking people. Uh, but I see waiting at the crosswalk, waiting to cross the street, is Rhea Ripley. Uh, right after the show, she's got her suitcase, just finished performing, was one of the highlights of the show. And there's a fan in a wheelchair, and she's so nice, takes a photo, takes some time. I, I have no idea what, what they're saying, but based on the actions, you can see she's really engaging with them. And I, mm. I thought that's something that was really cool, to take some time out of your day to, you know, the show's over, no one else is around. And because it's New York City, no one even probably realizes it's her. Probably thought it was some other panhandler uh, going on their way to their next uh, street corner gig. But I thought it was just very nice that uh, she engaged and took the time to to hang out with this fan that just wanted a photo, an autograph. And uh, yeah, and uh, it was just lovely. And I needed a spot like that. All yeah. Right. Rhea oh, no. is actually like very, like very nice, like. Like her, her uh, TikTok is so funny because she's like really goofy, like out of character. <laughs> she's amazing. All right. So, uh, so I'm up next, and I'm not sure how controversial this is going to be, but uh, this is someone that I talk about a lot with my brother in, in the sense of amazing in the ring, doesn't even have to speak and has so much mm. charisma and can get the fans behind them. I am going to put Asuka. As a future oh. Hall of Famer, is uh-huh. that controversial? I don't think so. I don't Ooh, think okay. so. Okay, I think I, you know I think what? it's I think the controversy is down to Her the booking, booking for Oscar. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, it's good mm-hmm. to know because I don't have a lot of people to bounce these ideas off of, and so to know that I'm not alone in thinking this is very uh, reassuring. But uh, how many how many characters? Uh, you know, they're given the foreigner character. They're not allowed to yeah. speak. And yet, the audience is all behind them. They're all into it. Uh, there's so much energy whenever like you talk about uh, being mm-hmm. purposeful with what you're doing. The facial reactions yeah. matter more. Great in the ring. Uh, some very memorable matches, including Money in the Bank. And hilarious to boot. Like, really legit makes me laugh based on what they're doing in the ring. So, for me, future Hall of Famer. Love everything Oscar does. Really look forward to it. Every time I uh, I see her on the pay per view card, I know it's going to be a great match and just a good show all around. So for me, future Hall of Famer and and looks unique mm-hmm. compared to uh, the women's division where it's so easy to look alike and look similar. Uh, Oscar stands out. Yeah, mm-hmm. Oscar definitely. Oscar herself as a performer, as a character, as an all round is future Hall of Famer. Like n- no debates here, hands down. The only problem that people could make a case against is just because her booking in WWE has not been that great, which is weird to say when she's like a only I lost. I think she's been champion at least three or four times. She, um, I'm pretty sure she's a Grand Slam champion, if I remember correctly. Like Asuka has all of the on paper a- accolades. And yet it still feels like the run that they give the runs that they give her don't feel as substantial as they should. But again, that's not Oscar's fault. That's the WWE booking fault. And, and even saying all of that, I know I will drag the hell out of them. And even saying (laughs) all of that, she's still making it in the hall of fame. Like, even with them basically tying a ball around her neck with the bad creative writing, she's still in the Hall of Fame. Like, that should tell you how good of a performer she is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'll just also add that I feel like Asuka... Well, let me make a comment, because this has gone... This has been my mind a little bit. I -hmm. think that with Rhea, as an example of a future Hall of Famer, like, she could lead the Hall of Fame class when she's in. Mm -hmm. I, I also think that something else that we should acknowledge is that, you know... 
every year it seems like there's like the one woman who's chosen for the Hall of Fame, and then everyone's like, "Why did you choose Stacy Keebler? Why did you choose yeah. Tori Wilson? Whoever it might Ooh. be." So, which I don't think is fair because mm-hmm. I do think they deserve it for what their role was and how women were being used at the time. Um, I think that Asuka would be phenomenal. I also feel like she could be someone who, you know, let's say that she retires in three years. I could see Asuka even being inducted in 10 years. Like, I think people will mm-hmm. always look back on Asuka as someone who deserved so much more, but also mm-hmm. brought so much uh, exactly. charisma, uniqueness, talent, all that stuff uh, mm-hmm. to the table. You know what I mean? So, I, I like, she, she's agree. easily a future Hall of Famer. Yeah, I, I, yeah, couldn't put it better myself. All right, so I'm next up, and we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to wrap this. Up I was a gonna bit. say, so Mari, I, think, I was uh-huh. gonna make, I was gonna, I want to make a pitch to you on this. Okay. So we could like maybe we could be quick with the rest of them, but I don't know if like you have. What are you thinking? This pick is like your pick, or we could have like one more round of picks after this, where we run through. Because I'm, I'm curious what what we have time so, for with this episode. So I was thinking um I'll make my I'll make my pick. I do have to run somewhere. So I'll make my pick, but my thought process is this was really fun. We only got through so many people and honestly, you know, there more might be more weeks like this where we just mm-hmm. don't have a lot to necessarily talk about when it comes to WWE. So yep. let's just come back to it and let us know. Let's let's open it to our listeners. Let us let them uh, tell them. Let us know. Did they like this tier list? Uh, do they want to hear us talk about more people? Because we can't get through a lot of you know we can't get through a lot of people in, in a lot of time. But so yeah, maybe this is just part one, and then we come Ooh. back in part two. Yeah, and and we come back and and another weekend and talk more uh what are your thoughts on that matt yeah or we could do like you i mean behind the scenes like we talked about factions as an interesting one you know yep. like maybe there's That's a world fine. where we want to focus on women's wrestlers because we're such huge women's wrestling fans and some mm-hmm. other level of tier so like give us your ideas of what you'd want to see us talk about i mean nxt like i'm just the list goes on and on um and as long as there's a tier list for it um, that makes it we'll so much easier it. for us. So mm-hmm. feel free to give us ideas. And I mean, even if there are weeks where it's like we could talk about what's happening, it's fun. This is this is fun. This is fun. Yeah. This and is for anyone really that we fun. missed, please, listeners, leave comments. Tell us, like, who from the folks we didn't talk about here, who do, who should be repackaged? Who are I, rising yeah. stars? I, I'd love to read all that. I have to say, I have to say, I have. I don't know if either of you have anyone like Mari. Do you have anyone lingering? I have like yeah, a couple that I would just want to throw out so they're on the tiers here. Okay. Well, we let don't reboot this. Okay, so let me just uh, let me just present my last person and then we Uh can throw some people on here for further discussion later if we want to. Thank you. All right. So I think I want to end with a man who is definitely first ballot Hall of Famer. Wow. Um, He's done it all. And I he's nowhere near being done. And it has to has to has to has to be. Seth freaking Rollins. This wow. man is at the top of his game all the time. Like, how are you always at the top of your game? Seth Rollins has demonstrated. He, so again, I missed the whole Shield era. You know, I missed the Shield yeah. era. So when I came in, Seth Rollins was the chicken shit heel with the briefcase, annoying the hell out of people. You know what I'm saying? And my first WrestleMania back was watching him do the, the heist of the century. And yeah. this man can do it all. He can be a heel. He can be a face. We've seen it now. He's in, like, even when he was like the Monday night Messiah and when that fell off and like, even at his lowest of low his lows, it's still his lowest of lows is still other people's highs. Like that, you know what I'm saying? Like when it comes to crowd engagement and interaction and stuff like that, like, he stop it right now stop the career right now hall of mm-hmm. fame hall of fame 100 i love seth Rollins. no disagreement ari i uh, for, for the person that literally just said dominic mysterio today like we could put him i could see into the future mm-hmm. for some reason i i love what seth is doing seth franklin a uh, huge fan <laughs> i i feel like <laughs> 
I feel like when I when I when I think of Seth, I do want to see more. Uh, he'll probably get there eventually. He is that good. But oh, when it yeah. comes to Seth, I want to continue to see more. Uh, so he's not a rising star. He's already there. No. Uh, mm -hmm. He himself tends to repackage himself in order to evolve. So he doesn't need a repackage. Wow. Uh, so I guess I'm kind of talking myself into he belongs in the future Hall of Fame. But I do want to see more before I, I put the official stamp on there. But I feel like uh, I'm probably less bullish uh, than the rest of you two on him. But he's phenomenal. I, I love uh, the drip. Uh, yeah. the, the Yoshi so good, shoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it brings an interesting element to the table of he's always going to wear something new and goofy each time or wacky or elegant. Uh, but I want to see more. What more do you got? Uh, give me, show me, uh, make me a bike clown. Make me more bikes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I have to say, like, I hear you, but you know what, Ari, you said something very impressive and important that, Seth Rollins is a man, he's a gift who could package himself, who could repackage himself. When have you ever gotten a gift for whatever holidays that you might celebrate that could pack themselves? Think about that. Think about that. He put the bow on, he put the wrapping paper, he put the little ribbon and made it that like the little squirrely thing, like the little swirl thing that you could do with the ribbon when you make it like oh, a swirl. Mm -hmm. He is doing that. He is mm -hmm. the swirl. So I completely agree with that. Um, no question for me about freaking Rollins. Um, frickin Rollins. So he's in there. He's in there with the freaking uh, Hall of Fame. What's he wearing so, in the right. Hall of Fame speech? <laughs> oh my Nothing. gosh. I don't <laughs> something Nothing. we something Spenders. we would never be able to comprehend. Yeah. Um, or maybe just right. like a robe. <laughs> Right. Did you guys? Did you? Did you all want to just throw out I, some names? Yeah, I want to throw out one who I I thought you were gonna go with this person earlier for a repackage. Montez Ford, come on up to the repackage. Montez Ford, just like to yeah. have him. He he got the new suit from Bobby Lashley, who's like proud. Well, Dawkins got out. the new suit. Yeah. Oh well, like well, like yeah. uh, look, but I, maybe this is the path to Montez being repackaged. He's getting the rub so from Bobby, don't, don't, is what I mean. They're no, evolving from you don't uh, want to put them together. No, no. Put Montez they're, they're, or put Angela Dawkins back down there. What do you got to say, Ari? I feel, I, I feel like they're up. evolving from like uh, like uh, block parties and street parties to the VIP in the club, right? Is that what the suits yes. for is that we're doing? That's no more red solo cups. Rooftop, rooftop parties. Popping bottles of great no. news. I'm okay. I'm okay with uh, Angela Dawkins being it with the Grey Goose and doing whatever he's gonna do. I need something darker, deeper, uglier, grimier, main eventier what? for Montez Ford. He has just so much that he's able to accomplish. This man could be the next Rock with more talent in the ring. Like that's what yeah. I'm saying with Montez Ford. Yeah. Such a star. So I want that for him. Um, I'm not going to be petty and throw um, Raquel into X-Pac heat, but Big Back isn't doing it for me. Um, and also I want to say <laughs> that Bianca Belair is not on this list. <laughs> Bianca Belair is not on this list. So yeah, Mari. Um, and watch the YouTube version if you want to know who else we're throwing <laughs> into the X-Pac heat. <laughs> Spoiler, Raquel, Austin Theory. Um... Ari, anybody yeah, you want to I'll, throw I'll throw out some there? rapid fire repackages. Uh, once again, give me a re another. Give me another repackage of Bray Wyatt. Like he's all over the place, but he needs to commit to something. Uh, he's I'm not. Kind of at the he's, oh, okay. he's so awkward. Uh, another one repackage. Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler can lose like a million times, but I still see the baddest woman on the planet. Repackage her and make her more legit, please. For Come on, like I, I already believe she's the badass. Like, just uh, present it the way she. It should I'd, be. I'd put her. I'd put her under rising star, maybe just Me because too. she is. She is going in that direction with Ronda Rousey as of there a couple is. weeks okay. ago. But okay. I'm with you. Like, they need to commit to that. They need to yeah. commit to that. Yeah. yeah. To that point, I, yeah, Ronda I Rousey I, and Shayna Baszler yeah. should have been a much bigger fight. There would have been so many other ways to hype that up. And they rushed it. Yeah, like what the hell, put, Mari. This is for you. Put Rhonda under X Pac heat. I feel like I she has her. value, but at the same time, she's a little bit too I'm rooting against right her. Yeah. I hope she I hope she stares up at the lights for Shana and then goes back to her 
her farm. I, I want to throw one more random name before we close this out. This yeah. is random. I'm just a huge fan, mm -hmm. huge fan of what, what Natty does. Natty Hart, stable in the ring. You could always count on her. Never gets hurt. What are you going to do? Never hurts anyone else. Uh, what are you going to do? I consider her the troop of a future Hall of Famer. Yes, that's where Natty Bye. belongs. I, I, have I, her, thought, actually. I thought that was a hot take. Good to know no. I'm amongst friends. She deserves mm -hmm. recognition. Every time I she see a match with her. She all. That's ah, a good note. So good. That's a good right. note. Thank That's you all a strong for one. Me. No, thank you. That's a strong note to end on. I mean, Mari, I know we, like, Bianca Belair, future Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. obviously. Not within the tier list, but she's there. Um, anyone else who, My, who is the not The people I'm going to throw can... on. Yeah, I, I get to throw. throw. I'm gonna we throw Bailey and Becky up there on Future Hall of Fame, right sure, next to Natalia. It's unspoken. Whoever the 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 remaining horsewomen who are in the company, they will be in there. Charlotte is not on this list as well. Like I don't know what this person was smoking when they didn't include <laughs> Bianca and Charlotte, but they all deserve. They, they like Bianca, Charlotte, uh, Bailey, Becky, Rhea, Natalia, Oscar, like. That class of women, mm -hmm. that is such a strong clash. Like, all of them are going to be future Hall of Fame. Like, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, sit with that thought, y'all. Like, we are literally watching yeah. Hall of Fame careers right now in the making. Like, give these people their flowers now. Appreciate mm -hmm. watching them now because one day they won't be doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I definitely had that that thought process and that realization when I looked up one day and two of my favorite women's wrestlers were no longer wrestling for the company that I watched. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And I I was just so in shock and I couldn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Back when we didn't know what was going to happen. So I'm glad that I, I can still watch them now in other places. But that uncertainty of saying, like, have I watched my last Sasha Banks? match ever have i lost my have that i hurt. watched my last naomi like match ever like it just makes me realize like we have to appreciate what's going on now even though some of the yeah some of the booking might not be great some of this no. might not be great but it's the, great these people will not last forever their you know their bodies will eventually like tell them to stop you know so just just you know love on them and and, and love what what's going on right now because yeah. One day we will be the people like back in my day. You wow, know? Mari is making the whole this. age thing. Yeah. Okay, and, well, you know, no, you're like, right. You're right. Think about for the attitude era, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're right. And I, I mean, there's other people we could add in here. Like, there's yeah, uh, and I don't even want to go into other names because yeah, I think we so could many. probably spend like 15 minutes adding others, like Cody and other people like that, whatever. But yeah. like, this is a solid list. I think that the wrestling wrap up could really get behind in terms of the people. Mari, um, not to put you on the spot, but is there any way to like just zoom in so it's just the tier list of people? Um, just the uh, tier yeah, list I can first. down. I can. Um... Awesome. We'll download it. We'll put it on our Twitter and all of the things. And this is pretty badass. Like I have to say, we did a good job. We have Roman oh. Reigns up in God mode on his own. We have <laughs> Dom Mysterio, Sheamus, Rhea, Asuka, Seth, Natty, Bailey, Becky, Future Hall of Famers, Rising Stars, Chelsea Green, Sonya Deville, LA Knight, Shayna Baszler. Some people need to be repackaged. Tegan, Pepper, It's a Great Opportunity, Ricochet, Samantha Irvin, Montez Ford, Bray Wyatt, and then the X-Pac Heat, Ronda Rousey, Austin Theory, Raquel Rodriguez, formerly Gonzalez, uh, Richard, aka Riddick Moss, and um, Lacey MF and Evans. That's who we've got. <laughs> we did it. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look Are you us. proud, Mari? We did it. I am proud. And there's, and again, there's so many people like I would love to like also talk about it. so we might revisit this like later on or whatever we can always always revisit but this yeah. was so so fun uh thank you to everybody who uh held in here with us mm -hmm. um ari where can the people find you since wow. it's not on twitter <laughs> you can find yeah. me uh running around in the streets of new york city no longer on Whoa. twitter <laughs> you're thinking of find me irl Wow. Maybe the next wrestling show. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Like keep an eye out. How will people know where like that they're running into you? Will you be wearing uh, that Mr. Funny shirt or I'll wear the Mr. Else? Funny <laughs> shirt, tweet it out into the abyss, and I'll 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 feel it. You might be Batman. 
I'm just having this realization. Like maybe this, this is what's going on. Anyway, um, and you know, thank you, Ari, for being here as always. What lovely to podcast with you. Um, if people want to find me, they could find me on the platforms at Matt Scott GW. And yeah, happy to be here. Uh, more other podcasting things coming up, but um, yeah, I don't really have things to a ton of things to plug. Mari, where can the people find you? Of course, you can find me and Sarah Carradine bringing True Crime Tuesdays to REJP over on the Crime Scene Podcast. Um, so definitely uh, go there, listen to us. You can go to robhasawebsite.com slash crime scene in order to listen to us. This week, we talked about... What did you talk about? Sex that? scandal. <laughs> How to create a sex scandal. <laughs> I always forget, like when I... People have to be like this. How does she not know what you, we part? We I podcast me and Sarah podcast so much <laughs> about so many things that it's like, and it's all out of order. Yeah. But anyways, uh -huh. um, we were we podcasted about how to create a sex scandal this week, uh, featuring um N Nicole Weaver. Uh, you might be familiar with her if you are on Big Brother Twitter. She is a former journalist for the uh, the Cheat Sheet, and she's a oh. like an avid reality TV um journalist and she joined us to talk about a docuseries on max about a about a woman who basically gets her foster kids to accuse their biological parents of uh, child sex abuse Ooh. come to find out it wasn't real so um definitely go check us out by going to robhasawebsite.com slash crime feed to Slight. subscribe um and listen to us. We we are a true crime review podcast that we watch all true crime properties, documentaries, docuseries, and uh we tell you if you should watch it. Um uh, Matt will be a uh guest for us upcoming. We will be watching Lady yep. of Silence. Uh -huh. which I know a lot of people listening might like this lady of silence. It's on Netflix and it's about a female wrestler who was a serial killer. In Spoiler. Mexico. Spoiler. Spoiler. 19, she, 19. she may or may not. She may or may not have been the serial killer because they think mm -hmm. it's a man, but like, let's, yeah, well, you spoilers, gotta listen. Spoilers. Tune in. Yeah, that's why you gotta listen. Watch. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. listen to us. Yes. Yes. So it's coming up soon. Okay. I'm excited to do that. Mari. Yes, I was also on the Bachelorette this weekend. Mm, uh, nice. Me and Amy, I was I guest hosted while Haley oh, wow. was away. We talked about charity season. I had so much fun. So if you go to robhasawebsite.com slash rehapups feed, that's R-H-A-P-U-P-S feed, you can get all of our reality TV content over there. So you can listen to me talk about that. I had so much fun. I, I, I love being back with the Bachelorette. Uh, I, Bachelorette look, I'm just saying, this is not me, but but Mari, I'm just saying next time they call you toward okay. the start of the season, call me. I have I will. that's one of the most fun podcasts that I've ever done. And I've not it watched was. The Bachelorette since that season. And so. I and I told and I told Amy that because she's like, we they hadn't been asking guests because they didn't think anybody was watching. And, and I was like, because we, we've had some down seasons in between you know, the last time we went Mr. on. 27 pages <laughs> of notes over here. I will catch yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and so uh, also uh, me and Chappelle, we will be mm -hmm. coming back with the Connect over on Post Show Recaps. Uh, this week, we will be previewing and doing a kickoff show for HBO slash Max's um, Rap Shit. Rap Shit will be back with season two. So we will be covering season two uh, episodically every week. Uh, but we will also be doing a season one retrospective this week, a kickoff. So it gives you a little bit of time before the rap shit premieres on August 10th to catch up and then uh, listen to us. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's, it. that's all. That's all for me. Um, but yeah, so if you haven't already, of course, um, subscribe to the Wrestling Wrap Up podcast by going to robhasawebsite.com slash wrestling feed. Um, please, uh, anytime is a great time to become a patron of the RHAP patron, Patreon by going to www.patreon.com slash RHAP. We are going into a Big Brother season, y'all, so this is the perfect time. We're about to go into Big Brother and Survivors, so go become a patron today. Get access to the, the, the patron five for fives, the, the Facebook group, and the Discord. It's like, what are you doing? Like, Do it now. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So lots coming up, lots of exciting things. Um, Mari, thanks for being you. Uh, Thank and you. again, Mari talks too much. That's too like the number two. I'm not sure if Thank you plugged you. it or not. I, I, I don't I remember not. doing the twos. So <laughs> yeah. that's I'm on it. Uh, but yeah, Mari, how do we end these episodes? I don't I know. Watch I out for say, flying elbows and what else? Remember, wrestling is for everybody, but not all wrestling is for everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Throw them up, lay it down, just like Matt Amari. Wrestling little half up is gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving in Ferraris. And we coming every weekend, it's feeling like a party. Mula Rick Flair, huh? Showing out like a young couple Blair, huh? Best podcast, flush it in the air, huh? From the rings and we win it, don't care, huh? No cap. Throw them up, lay it down, just like Matt Amari. Wrestling little half up is gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving in Ferraris. And we coming every weekend, it's feeling like a party. Who gets